Okay, in this video we're going to prove a claim that the set of solutions for a homogeneous linear system of equations forms a subspace. And before we get into this proof, I'd like to make a few notes on notation. So when we talk about a system of linear equations, particularly a homogeneous linear system, um, we've got things like coefficients a11 times some variable x1, and an a12 times variable x2 and so forth all the way up through a1n x sub n and that equals some constant which in this case is zero because it's a homogeneous system and then we have maybe a second equation a21 this is some coefficient times x1 plus a22 x2 and so forth and again that equals zero because this is a homogeneous system all the way down through our mth equation for the system. And when we write a system of equations we have been accustomed to converting this to an augmented matrix and the augmented matrix is of the following form. We've got our coefficient matrix, so we've got a11, a12, and so forth, all the way up through a1n, and then our first column, second row, a21, all the way down through our mth row, and so forth. And so we've been working with these coefficient matrix matrices, and over here on the right hand side we have, of course, our column of zeros. But there's another way of representing this quite nicely, and this is something called a matrix equation. And in the matrix equation, I'm going to take and write the coefficient matrix, so here's our coefficient matrix, as A. All right, so here's A. A1. 1, A1, 2, and so forth, A1, N. So this is just our regular old coefficient matrix. Oops, that's a typo. Let's fix that. So we'll denote that A. That's our coefficient matrix. Um, and then, of course, we have our variables, X1, X2, all the way up through X sub N. So that column vector, I'm going to call it capital X. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have equals a zero vector in this case because it's a homogeneous system. So I'm going to write equals a big zero to denote the zero vector. So you could put a little arrow over that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to denote it as a big zero. So the matrix equation looks like AX equals zero, where all of these pieces are are matrices, right? We've got a coefficient matrix, x is a big column vector, it's an n by one matrix, and zero is a big matrix of zeros, it's n rows by one column. All right, so let's work with the matrix equation. So here's our proof. We want to prove that the set of solutions for our homogeneous system, we want to prove it forms a subspace. So consider the set of solutions to a linear or homogeneous linear system. Okay, so let's um, be more specific here. Uh, these are solutions to the system A x equals zero. Okay, so let's denote this set. Let's denote the set of solutions. as the set W. W is the set of vectors X, capital X, such that A X is a column vector equals zero. All right, and we want to prove that W is a subspace. So to show that W is a subspace, we need to show two things hold. First of all, uh, W is closed 
under addition. Okay, so let's pick two vectors that live in W. Let's pick a capital X1 and a capital X2. Again, these are two column vectors that satisfy this equation. So let's pick x1 and x2 that live in W. In other words, um, a times x1 equals 0 and a times x2 equals 0 by nature of living in W. And we want to show that if we add these two vectors, we want to show that W is closed under addition. So what happens when we add those two W, those two vectors? Oops. So the question is, is x1 plus x2 in W? Well, it is in W because what's it mean to live in W? It means that a times x1 plus x2 equals 0. And we know by properties of matrix multiplication, this is just ax1 plus ax2. And that's 0 plus 0. So that is 0. In other words, that's the defining feature of living in W. The second thing we need to check, we need to check that W is closed under scalar multiplication. And to do this, let's pick an X1 in W. And let's pick any real scalar. So let's pick k, an element of the real numbers. It's a real scalar. And we need to check that k times x1 is in w. And it is in w because of the following. Well, a times the scalar k times x1 by properties of scalars. This is just k a x1. This piece is 0 by nature of x1 living in w. And k times 0 is just 0. And again, that's the defining feature in w. So this scalar multiple of x1, that is in w because a times that is in w. It's a solution to the homogeneous system. Um, so this shows. This shows W, which was our set of solutions, is a subspace.